So uh, I'm Joe Cryer, City Councilman for District 9. Uh, I want to welcome you to this one in a series of hearings throughout the community. Some of you, I think, were at the hearings that we held before the budget was laid out uh, to get citizens' in input on what the priorities of the budget should be. And now, as you know, we are making the rounds in the community uh, to share the, the manager's proposed budget, which has been laid out to the council and is being laid out to the community. Uh, Maria Villagomez will, in a few minutes, will walk you through the process of giving us input on the budget, which is what, on the proposed budget, which is what we'd like to get from you tonight. What do you think about it? What do you think we ought to add to it or subtract from it or change in it? And, uh, my personal goal from the day I got on council on November 7th of last year is to be a good listener. And the reason I have gone to a number of these hearings uh, is because I learned from listening to you, and that's why I'm here tonight, because I want to listen to you. Uh, before I introduce Assistant City Manager Gloria Hurtado, we are honored to have Mayor Ivy Taylor here with us this evening, who called late this afternoon and said, I want to come sit in on your hearing. So uh, I've asked the mayor if she'd say a few words to us. I am a big admirer of this woman. Come on up here, Ivy. I'm <laughs> I am a big admirer of Ivy Taylor. I have admired her toughness, uh, her willingness to call the balls and strikes and make our decisions. Uh, I have admired her for somebody who is tight with the public dollar, uh, and I have admired her for someone who has been willing to lead. Uh, and she has clearly, I think, demonstrated that from the day uh, she took office. I really applaud the leadership she took with regard to hitting the pause button and discontinuing our uh, VA effort with regard to the streetcar project. I think she got us on a path that is absolutely appropriate, and it's a <laughs> it's a path that will get us to an election. And uh, without further introduction, other than to say I think she's going to be one hell of a good mayor, I'd like to formally introduce to you Mayor Ivy Taylor, my mayor, your mayor, our mayor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for that warm introduction. I don't have to tell you all that you have a wonderful representative and Councilman Joe Cryer, and I very much enjoyed working with him. Well, thank you all for coming out this evening. I know it's tough to come out on weeknights, and there are probably many other demands that you have at home, other things that you can be doing. So we really appreciate you participating in the process in this, in this way. And I've been pleased the last couple of years that we've broken the process up this way where we've allowed for folks to have input on the front end before the manager prepares the budget and now that we have a proposal now you have a proposal that you can work with and dig into and provide us your feedback and I agree with Councilman Cryer that it's a, a great part of our job is to listen and listen real well and so I wanted to be here this evening to hear some of um, some of your feedback related to the budget and so I appreciate you all allowing me to be here and again uh, thank you for your leadership I'm sure some of you in here are working with through your neighborhood associations and other organizations that play an important role in our city. So I appreciate uh, you all doing that. And I, I challenge each of you to leave here and tell 10 people what you heard this evening at the meeting um, so they can hear it firsthand from someone who participated in the process. And then hopefully we can get them to uh, be at the table uh, in future discussions. So again, thanks, and I'll pass it back over to Joe. Thank you, Mayor, very much. I, I should tell you all that City Manager Cheryl Scully had planned on being here tonight, but as you may have heard earlier today, we elected two new City Council members, uh, Keith Tony to succeed Mayor Taylor in District 2, and Maria Geary uh, to, to fill in for Chris Medina, who's off on military uh, assignment in District 7, and the District 7 hearing happens to be going on right now. And since uh, Councilwoman Aguirre has only been a Councilwoman for about five hours, Cheryl decided she ought to go over there and support and help her this evening. But she is well represented here by Assistant City Manager Gloria Hurtado, who's going to open this program, and then I think after uh, the opening video, she'll turn it over uh, to Maria Gomez. Gloria, thank you very much.
Thank you, Councilman. And uh, thank you all for being here tonight. I just thought, gee, I'm a replacement. Always wanted to be a replacement. Um, okay, um, we have um, a, a format that we're going to use tonight, but before we kick off with the video, um, just a couple of things about the budget. Uh, it was presented last week to the City Council, so this is the City Manager's draft budget, which is presented to the City Council and then brought out to the public to have your comment. The budget is balanced, as we're required to do. There are no layoffs in the budget, neither um, public safety nor civilian layoffs. There's no property tax increase. Uh, there are some increases to uh, streets and drainage, which in the first round of budget input, we heard from, from the public that this was one of the highest priorities. It also adds to some of the other priorities um, that the communities identified for us, and some of my favorites, since uh, they're my departments, uh, libraries and parks, there's increases, and then there are also increases to animal care. Um, there have been um, some emails circulating, so we just want to be clear. There are no cuts to domestic violence, uh, nor the victim's advocacy unit. So there are no cuts to those proposed in the budget. Um, today, what we will do is show the video. Um, Maria is going to go through some um, highlights, and then we'll go through the instructions on the um, exercises that you will do at your tables. Before we do that, though, I do want to um, acknowledge, um, well, first, I, we think we have another city councilman here. Councilman Ron Nuremberg walked in. I uh, thank you, Councilman, for being here. And then we have a number of city employees here, at least one at every table to help with the facilitation. So if I can ask um, all the city employees that are here to just stand up so they can be recognized. This is all after a full day of work. So thank you all for taking your time and helping out tonight. So with that, I will turn it over and let the, the video run. Thank you. The City of San Antonio's fiscal year 2015 proposed budget provides recommendations for making it easier to get around, becoming healthier, more educated, and providing affordable public safety. The City's $2.4 billion proposed budget is a reflection of what is most important to the community. The proposed budget is balanced as required by law, includes no increase to the City's property tax rate for the 22nd year in a row increases the street maintenance budget significantly, strikes a balance among the community's many priorities, and does not include layoffs for uniform or civilian employees, priorities that you shared with us during the five community budget meetings held in May. More than 400 people attended and worked in small groups to identify the cuts they would make, as well as to add funding to an existing service. Following these community meetings, the City Council held a day-long goal-setting session and together agreed on the following budget priorities. Increase funding for streets and drainage. Develop a multi-year plan to improve and acquire more parks. Enhance the City's investment in education, including more library services and adult literacy programs. Maintain and strengthen public safety without crowding out other services like streets, libraries, parks, and human services. Enhance animal care, neighborhood code enforcement, and other programs to improve neighborhoods. Keep the economic development toolbox equipped to attract new companies and jobs to San Antonio. Fund and complete a comprehensive plan for the city, including policies related to transportation, water, air quality, and public spaces. Public safety is by far the largest expense in the city's budget. Two out of every three general fund tax dollars are spent on fire and police protection. The fastest growing driver of public safety costs is the health care benefits the city provides for uniformed employees. Health care for uniformed employees costs the city nearly double what it costs for civilian employees. In the city's recent community survey, conducted by an outside pollster, 70% of respondents said they want to see uniformed health care benefits brought more in alignment with civilian health care benefits. The fiscal year 2015 proposed budget makes changes to health care benefits for firefighters and police officers, 
saving the city millions of dollars while still continuing to cover 100% of on-the-job injuries and offering better health care benefits than those provided to city civilian employees and better than those offered in other Texas cities. This follows the Council's direction to ensure that public safety does not exceed more than 66% of the city's general fund budget. By maintaining affordable public safety costs, the city can invest in other priorities. The proposed budget adds an additional $21.8 million for neighborhood street maintenance and drainage projects to the current $52 million in the infrastructure management program that is used for the continuous maintenance of San Antonio infrastructure. It will grow the infrastructure maintenance program by nearly 30%, which will significantly increase the number of roads fixed this year. It adds funding for the maintenance and operation of a new library, two new senior centers, and new parks projects approved by voters in the 2012 bond program. It funds the hiring of two city veterinarians to conduct spay-neuter surgeries to reduce stray animals and keep the city's live release rate of stray animals at 80%. It provides resources for a new program to regulate vacant buildings throughout our city. And finally, it funds a code enforcement case management system to close cases faster and more transparently. The fiscal year 2015 proposed budget does not include an increase to the stormwater fee. Instead, the city will review a new stormwater rate method and make recommendations to the city council and the community in the 2015 calendar year. The budget also does not include any funding for VIA's streetcar project. There are a few fee increases, including an increase in the fee for being transported by EMS and a $1 increase in the solid waste fees for garbage collection. So there you have it, the fiscal year 2015 proposed budget, balanced, no tax rate increase, addresses the community's top priorities by keeping public safety costs affordable and does not include any layoffs for uniform or civilian employees. The city budget is the most important policy document the City Council will consider in any given year. And before the Council considers adopting it on September 18th, we want to hear from you. There will be five community budget meetings held across the city and two public hearings at the City Council Chambers. You can learn more at the city's website, www.sanantonio.gov. Okay, so before we get into the exercise and you're going to give us your input on the proposed budget, um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about public safety and some of the changes that are being recommended to uh, public safety health care benefits. Uh, my name is Maria Villa Gomez. I'm the budget director for the city of San Antonio. Um, so let me start by giving you some background. Some of you may have heard that uh, the mayor and the city council appointed a 13-member task force last fall to evaluate how much the city was spending on legacy costs, pension, and health care for all employees of the city of San Antonio. Uh, this task force was represented by members of our uh, labor unions, uh, civilian in uniform, as well as members of our uniform and civilian retiree groups, uh, business community leaders, and the city manager. And one of the things that they identified was the cost of health care, how much the city is spending on providing uh, health care benefits to our uniform employees. And we're talking about uh, medical benefits, not uh, those uh, uh, costs related to injuries on the job that is covered by, by our workers' compensation fund, but those um, medical costs that all of us experience in our and uh, for instance, when you get a, uh, have a flu or perhaps your child needs to go to the hospital, that's the kind of medical benefits that we're talking about. The task force provided recommendations to the city council in February, and one of the recommendations, again, was to align uniform health care closer to what our civilian employees pay and also closer to the health care that is provided to other uniform employees in other Texas cities. So some of the uh, findings that the health, the task force identified is that the cost of provide, providing public um, safety services to the community and our general fund today consume two-thirds of the total general fund budget. 
This public safety budget has increased over the past uh, six years by 10%, so it continues to crowd out other services within public safety. So as you can see on this uh, chart, public safety is two-thirds of the general fund budget, and as that budget continues to grow and grows faster than our general fund revenues, it's crowding out the other services within the general fund, such as streets, parks, code enforcement, libraries, and health. So one of the recommendations to the council was have some balance between the general fund. We don't want to see more reductions to our parks and our libraries, so come up with a policy to maintain a balance within the general fund. And that's a direction we got from the city council in May when the city council had an all-day meeting to develop the priorities for the budget they told uh, the city manager and the staff maintain public safety at 66% of the general fund. So the proposed budget that was presented by the city manager last week maintains public safety at 66%. Some of the information that the task force review was the cost of health care for uniform employees. So this particular graphic shows how much an employee pays towards the cost of health care. So the national average, so on average, all employees in the country pay about 43% of the cost of health care. And that is through premiums, co-pays, and out-of-pockets. Here in the city of San Antonio, our civilian employees pay 30% of their cost, while the uniform employees pay 9%. The majority of the difference has to do with the fact that they don't pay monthly premiums for their health care like most of us do. In terms of how much the city is spending in providing health care, we did a comparative analysis with other cities. So you can see San Antonio uniform employees, the city in 2013, last year, we, play, we pay close to $13,000 per uniform employee, compared to our civilian employees, which was about $7,000. When you look at the cost that is paid by other cities in Texas, our cost of uniform employees, again, is higher. Most of our uh, Texas cities provide the same level of benefit for civilians and for uniform employees. So their employees pay the equal uh, amount of premiums and co-pays and deductibles. So what we have in the budget, what we uh, are recommending to the council, is uh, to pay $10,000 for health care for each of our uniform employees. This alternative uh, is somewhere in the middle between what we paid for a civilian employee, what we paid in 2013, $7,000, and what we're paying for a uniform employee, which is $13,000. So again, the budget recommends that the contribution from the city for each uniform employee is $10,000. One of the questions that we heard as we were meeting with the uh, task force was what about total compensation? How do our firefighters and our police officers compare in total pay to other cities in Texas. So you see here on the screen is a comparison for a police officer with 20 years of experience. And San Antonio is second to the city of Austin and is very well compensated when you compare to other uh, Texas cities um, uh, like Fort Worth, Dallas, El Paso, Corpus, and Houston. Our firefighters, this is an example for compensation, total compensation for a firefighter with 20 years of service. Uh, we are tied with the city of Austin. So again, uh, the, the pay, the total compensation packet for our uniform employees is very competitive with other Texas cities. So this is again to provide you some context on one of the major changes that we are recommending within the proposed budget, which is aligning the cost of um, health care of our uniform employees closer to our civilians and to other uniform employees across uh, Texas. So with that, now that you know a little bit more what, about the budget and what we're proposing and recommending, what we want to know is what do you think about the proposed budget? So this exercise, uh, you're going to have 30 minutes, and we're going to ask you two questions. 
There's again a CD staff member at each of your tables that will help with the facilitation. And the first question is, what areas of the budget are you in agreement with? Areas that you don't wanna see any changes to. So for instance, if you are in agreement with the additional $15 million in streets and $7 million in drainage and you don't wanna see any changes, we wanna know that. Uh, so let us know maybe two or three of those programs that you're in support and you don't want to see any changes made. And then the second question is perhaps there's an area in the budget that you wanted to see more funding added or a new program that is not included in the budget today. So if you can give us up to three of those, so for instance if you wanted to increase more funding for the libraries, uh, then we will ask you to, to give us your, your recommendation. Now since the budget is balanced, if you recommend an increase on a program, we're gonna ask you to provide us with an alternative what to reduce so we can maintain a uh, balanced budget. So this week we are doing community meetings across the city. Uh, today is the last day of those meetings. We have two public hearings, uh, one next week and the other one at the beginning of September to continue to get your input. And then finally, the budget will be approved on September 18. So if there's anything else that you want to share with uh, your city council member, the rest of the city council members, if you, you're welcome to attend this public hearings or continue to participate through the budget input box that is available online. So with that is uh, five minutes to seven, and we have 30 minutes to go through this exercise. Uh, my staff and I will be available to answer any questions that you may have about the budget. Thank you. Okay, so a lot of good discussion, a lot of good input, so we're gonna start the reporting process. And I understand that table two is ready to go, right? Okay. Okay, if I, if I can have everybody's attention. Okay, table two. All right. Hi everybody, I'm Erica from table two. Um, our table may be a little different. We have under our reductions, um, based on what we support, we didn't find that we need to do too many cuts. We actually found that there are a lot of places that we can still find revenue for the budget. Um, starting with commercial tax increases, if the property values were being more scrutinized and these buildings were paying what they should as they're making great money, so they absolutely should be able to, um, we could find more ability to not have to deduct anything in the health care for the men and women that keep our city safe and um, protect us. And we could continue to support animal care services, delegate agencies, maintain the AAA rating, um, support the victims advocacy units and um, sectors. So we talked a lot about we want the right size assessment on these buildings. And um, instead of cutting, because it's easy to look at the comparisons we saw in the slide and think of it as a number. Oh, we're doing pretty good, Austin. Oh, we're only second to Austin. Well, that's good enough. I don't think it's right to encourage complacency in a service in police and fire that have done a great job historically for this city. I wouldn't want to live in a city that was any less safe or any less wonderful because of this force. Um, I think we need to encourage that by not showing them Oh, here's your health care plan. Sorry, it's not great, but do you still want to do a really good job for us? I think that also ties into when you look at nonprofits, you want to pay for something that goes only towards the cause, but not towards the workers that get you the results you want in those nonprofits. Uh, and this is the same with our police force and our fire departments. We want them to do a really good job, but we're not willing to give them the means to keep their families safe and healthy. Um, it doesn't add up to me, and I think everything's very interrelated. Our victims advocacy unit has a great relationship with our police force. Um, they've both been very congratulatory of each other, and I think we need to maintain those great qualities in our city to keep the city better. Um, we, someone made a comment at our table, I, we had added street lights for District 5, and any of the underrepresented districts, like 2, 3, and 4, um, 
it seems pretty obvious that people, everyone in the city deserves lights, not to be hit on their street when they have kids and they're going for an evening walk in the stroller with their dog. Um, and someone, I mean, it's a dark joke, but oh, well, they'll need them if we're going to continue to cut our police force and cut their benefits. You'll need those street lights. They'll have to take the place of that. Um, and I think we need to look at the numbers and humanize them a little bit. Um, we have someone from the fire in our table, and he said, um, you know, I come home, I come home with fluids and blood and things that I did all day on me, and I bring it into my home with my kids. And when you look at the numbers and you think, oh, we can cut there, we can cut from that budget of those workers. Um, but when you think about their children and their families of these people that do so much for us, being affected because we're not giving them good enough health care to maintain good health for themselves um, doesn't, doesn't seem right. So again, commercial tax increases on these resorts and buildings that are just, they're doing right. Um, executive salaries and the bonuses, um, we want to look at those a little more. Um, and we think that other funds there's other areas of the budget to look at that do not include um, our public safety sector. So, anything else? Okay. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, table one. Great. Hi. My name is Richard Rathman for table one. And uh, some of the additions that we had talked about, we kept it into uh, three groups. Additions, reductions, and we can turn it this way a little bit so they can see. And additions, reductions, and keeps. Some of the additions, the, uh, one, of, one of the things was the Senior Citizen Center um, in District 9. Uh, there was, felt that that was an important need. And I think that's important when you start looking at the demographics as people are getting older. If we don't start taking care of the seniors, then we're going to end up with a lot of folks that are out on the streets and uh, when you look at under the bridge and some of these activities where there's a lot of people trying to feed the homeless, um, a lot of those folks are above the age of 50, 50 60 and as, it, as the age gets older and it becomes more and more difficult to, to fund things, uh, we need to have the capability to take care of those folks. So that's one of the reasons why senior citizen, the Senior Citizen Center, did I get that right? And uh, street lights, uh, adding uh, about $2 million for the streetlights in uh, District 5, but, uh, but uh, throughout the city, any place where there's um, um, severe light shortage, and as we know that when there's light, there's uh, less um, crime, um, all the different things that come with trying to take care of uh, the city, and so adding the streetlights is going to be a big plus on reducing the, the crime. Increase in property tax, uh, this is an addition here. Increase in property tax by one cent. That, um, the estimate there is $7.5 million uh, if we increase the property tax by one cent. The feeling was we haven't done this in 22 years. Is it not about time that we increase the, the property tax a cent to try to cover some of these expenses? Um, a lot of folks don't want to hear the, the increase, but you know it's one of those things where if we want to keep it. Human services is back to um, the family advocacy piece and uh, taking care of, you know, the discussion is we're not going to reduce um, the police force, we're not going to reduce any of the services, but you know, the city is growing. We continue to, ha to increase the size of the city, the number of people that we have to protect, and if we don't increase the police force and if we don't increase the firefighters and we don't take care of them, we're going to start becoming, you end up going on a downhill trend when you start to do something like that. You can increase and start and continue to increase the population and the size that has to be covered and not start to suffer from it. So we felt like the human services, and what we didn't want to do was to, if we don't increase the size and you increase the requirement, you start taking the, the force from other places within, within the organization in order to put them on the street. And so the folks that are in the family advocacy and the other locations, they end up having to move out. And so we felt we shouldn't do that. Uh, street light utility bill, um, I need some help on that one. That was the, oh, the, right, so there's going to be, an, if you increase the number of street lights, you're going to increase the number of um, the, the charge for the energy to support those street lights. Uh, and then the vacant building ordinance, um, a revenue increase, uh, taking care of getting the, uh, the vacant buildings uh, covered on that. 
reductions. Redberry Mansion maintenance, we felt like that wasn't one that we should be paying for. And uh, Parks and Recreation was uh, reduce some of the, the Parks and Recreation services. Is that what I had? Okay. And then um, some of the keeps, some of the ones we really like was street and drainage maintenance. We have to keep that, um, you know, with the flooding and everything that's going on. We've got to be able to, to take care of our streets. Otherwise, um, the accidents are going to increase. The, the da danger to the, the kids that are out there, it's all going to increase if we don't take care of them now. And then the wellness program and fitness initiatives. That is what reduces their medical expenses. If we can continue to encourage every, everybody to be healthy and we can support those pieces, we're going to see a reduction in our medical expenses. So um, that's, where, that's what we came up with. Did I get it right? Thank you. Table one. Another table. Table three. OK. Hi, my name is Washington, I'm, and I sat over here at, at table three. Uh, so the things that we wanted to keep the same were uh, streets and drainage. Uh, as the city grows and we get more people driving on the roads, we want to make sure that those roads are, are maintained well. Uh, the victim advocacy uh, services, um, like they mentioned on table one, that's something that we wanted to make sure to, to we maintain. And uh, the animal care uh, services, we wanted to see if we can get some of these stray dogs off the street and enforce, uh, enforce some of the laws that we have on the books. Um, so add and then reduce, and in, in really in reduce we did also uh, look at some other revenue streams like uh, table two mentioned here with the, with the tax. Uh, we did talk about it, but I guess we didn't write it down. But we wanted to look at maybe uh, the tax breaks for, uh, for developers and these um, the, the high-rise uh, condos downtown and whatnot, they're getting a lot of tax breaks and see if we can kind of stop that to, to uh, increase some of our revenue. Um, we wanted to add some library hours. Uh, again, going back to the animal care, uh, a lot of the enforcement of the, of the, books, of the uh, laws that we have on the books, maybe add some more animal care service employees so they can help enforce that. And uh, we wanted to add city council pay uh, you know, twenty dollars. I think it was twenty dollars a month or something like that that they get paid. It's kind of embarrassing. Uh, they should get paid for what they do running a running a city this size. Uh, and then we added a number four is keep keep the public safety the way it is, um, not the way it's proposed. And then again, going back to the reduce uh, the tax breaks for the developers. Um, oh, the purchasing efficiency. Uh, look at better ways to spend money when we're when we're. Uh, Using, uh, looking at buying stuff for the city, contracts and whatnot that we have with vendors. If we can shop around and get a better price, uh, we can probably save a lot of money on that. And then also the uh, Hemisphere Park development, um, at, you know, trying to encourage people to, to build there. We can probably use some of that money in other parts of the city. Thank you. Um, another volunteer? Table seven. Well, um, I should thank our table for having a lot of good, strong opinions and being so fully engaged in, in what's going on. Um, one of the things we like about the budget proposal, I think we were pretty unanimous that we liked the idea of um, uniform benefit reduction and we ranged in terms of significantly in how that should be done um, from, at, from the point of let's compare their benefits to those of teachers and then some were looking at it as we need to, we need to do it in a way that re makes us remain competitive to maintain qualified firefighters at the same time making sure we don't bust the budget. Um, we like the idea that um, we maintained uh, library services and there were only minimal, I, I can't say it for the people who are in that department, but there weren't significant um, reductions in human services. 
at least what I saw. And also, um, we supported the comprehensive planning initiative that will make all of our, a lot of our expenses make a lot more sense when it gets done. Uh, changes, um, a, um, a short-term temporary increase in um, human services to support, um, uh, to support people who are displaced and actually made homeless from um, economic development, development um, e events uh, to the um, to the point, basically, you know, one of the guidances for the budget was to maintain SA 2020 um, objectives and uh, creating homelessness would be contrary to that. So um, just temporarily until the task force can come to a way of making recommendations and those recommendations are implemented to balance the two goods of economic revitalization and neighborhood preservation. We wanted to see an increase in senior centers. And, um, and we talked about how that could be increased, um, possibly integrating into other facilities, possibly um, tax increase, um, collecting, especially collecting all property tax um, I guess comparable to the whole issue of commercial and business property, uh, making sure we all as residents have our own parity in property tax payment with uh, the commercial properties. And, um, and then increased daycare for working moms. And um, again, there were, we, were, we talked about how to finance this, and two things came up. Well, three. One is to um, collect all of our property taxes. One is uh, following the example of our police department and our uniform services budget efficiency is to integrate, like as they integrated, they want to integrate the storefronts into other locations. Um, that, that principle can be used in so many, uh, so many of our services by uh, integrating the location of uh, services. And then the other um, was that um, our, ta our tax rate um, hasn't been increased, I think, did you s in say like in 20 years? In 22 years, it was rolled back in 2008 and has not been increased since then. And even if we increased it to where we were 10 years ago in 2004, we would still remain the second lowest property income tax city um, uh, compared to those cities listed in the budget as well as Houston. So we still remain competitive for economic development. We can combine that with the fact that Texas doesn't have um, an income tax. And then the additional part is that that can also add to our retaining the AAA um, rating, which is so important to our being able to provide sufficient services and getting good um, interest rates. And um, yes, and that's where we are. Can, does anyone want to add? OK. Pardon? Oh, and the last one, wait, I'm sorry. Is this, is this the one about um, the, um, oh, the street lights. Okay, through me, okay. Oh, it's lighting, okay. Street lighting? Okay, okay. Not enough, okay, to increase the amount of money available for street lighting. I'm sorry, I messed that up. Thank you, table seven. Table six, I believe they're ready. Here, where should we go? Let's go. Hi, everyone. My name is Rita Brodigam, and I am going to be speaking for the group at table six. 
We were in agreement, and in this order, the things, uh, the areas that we did not want funding cut from were streets and infrastructure, libraries, they have fought so hard, <laughs> and then animal care services. So those were the three where we wanted it to, you know, with the additional funding that they have to keep it the same. Then we decided where increases and the source of where we were gonna get the money. I think the source of where we were gonna get the money was the hardest thing because there were all kinds of areas that we wanted to increase. One of the main ones that we all agreed with was animal care services and for a specific um, project. Uh, Vincent Medley is here and so we have the facts from him. A animal care officer um, makes about 45,000 a year when you include benefits. So that would be the whole price that it would be to have one officer, about $45,000 for the truck that he's going to drive. So we thought adding two officers, since they only have like 36, 34, 36, Vincent, where are you? 34? 36. I mean, that would be a huge advantage, a huge step for enforcement and for getting people, um, getting dogs off the street, which is what so many of our citizens are wanting to do. So we ask here for 180,000. Okay, so we're figuring, okay, where are we gonna get the money? So, <laughs> we had a brilliant, yes, it was very good. Um, the source we thought, there's that performance pay, and it's controversial at best, and we thought possibly you could just shave off $180,000 off of the performance pay probably wouldn't affect a whole lot of people a whole lot and that would pay for two additional ACO officers that would be on our streets and continuing to uh, solve the problems that we have with stray animals and enforcement. That's what we had. Okay, thank you. Thank you, table six, table five. Hello, my name is Gerald, and I'm speaking for Table 5. We did kind of a free flow in terms of our discussion, so that's how we've uh, put it together. We like that there's money being set aside for street repair and drainage repair. However, we believe that the money should go to where the f most fixing needs to be done, where fixing is needed the most. I'll come back to that. We would recommend that there be a round two of the Health Benefits Task Force, and that would be appointed with one representative from each district in the city, and the neighborhood associations have input into the representation or into whoever would represent that district in the city. We believe that there needs to be lots of money for senior sidewalks. One of our persons that's lived in San Antonio over 20 years, 30 years, didn't get how many, Southeast side, no sidewalks. That's not right. He ought to have sidewalks. We have sidewalks across the city. Someone in the city doesn't have them. We need to, to go there. Number four, to keep the delegate agencies, those that deal with training and education, opportunities for people to uh, better themselves, to, to advance, to get a, a, a good kind of job, and, and the, the Family Violence Services was mentioned, as has been mentioned a number of times. We like it that there's no tax increase. I don't believe it. <clears throat> I think I'm going to pay more taxes this year than I did last year. The precise thing to see, there's no increase in the tax rate. And we like that. We, we like to find efficiency and keep it that way for another 22 years if we can. Number seven, we had a comment about quality of work. When they tore down Walgreens downtown, and when they tore down the Robert B. Green Hospital, it took them a long time to tear those buildings down because they had been so well constructed. And the desire is that there would be a similar quality of construction in the projects that are built in the city and that we uh, watch for that and look for them and emulate it. As far as finding some more resources, uh, Downtown subsidies are a place that 
uh, money can be found. If people want to live in apartments that cost a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a month, that's terrific. But we shouldn't need to subsidize the people who want to do that. Let me come back. Oh, there, oh, there's uh, two other ones. Come back to the sidewalks and the streets. If there would be $12 million, the way that it would probably be apportioned would be 1.2 in each of the 10 districts. We have a, we like the idea of this. Apportion 1 million for each of the 10 districts and take those other 2 million and prioritize the needs in the city, most severe needs to, uh, in, in, in that priority, and then funnel that $2 million each year into meeting those needs, whichever district that happened to be in. Over a 10-year period, the sidewalks could be built. There would be a, an equaling, a, a leveling of the uh, resources and, and of the uh, uh, livability in, in the neighborhoods. And then number six. There's been a lot of recommendation for animal care services. I think there are two more vets <laughs> that have been uh, nominated and budgeted for. I don't know what they make. I, I figure that they probably make 50000 each, another 25000 for uh, benefits and so forth. And we have a no-kill rate of 80% of stray animals in the city. And that's good. We'd be proud of that, happy for that. Unfortunately, our no-kill rate for babies in the womb is 64 percent. And we believe that we should put money into raising that no-kill rate into areas, organizations that work in this arena. Absent education, adoption education, mentoring for adolescent girls so that we can see that no-kill rate rise as well. That's it for Table 5. Thank you, everybody, for your input. As I mentioned, we will gather all the comments that we received this week. We will be providing those to the City Council next Wednesday, and those results will be available on the City's website, so you can read all the comments from all the different meetings we held uh, this week. So thank you so much, and I'm going to pass it over to Councilman Cryer. Again, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Councilman Nuremberg, for coming. Uh, the mayor slipped out a little while ago. I'm really honored that she came by and sat at the table for a long period of time. We have two more of these hearings. Uh, re That's right. One this month and one at the beginning of September, and those will be posted on the city's website if you want to get the details on them. Thank you very, very much. I learn a lot every time I come to these, and I thank you all for educating me. Good night, everybody. <laughs>